morning folks. Welcome to episode 16 of the Eve Christie Hand Knitting Podcast on this Tuesday, the 26th of July 2016. I'm coming to you for the last time ever from the Swildenness of the Garden. I'm your host, Eva. You can find me in all the fun places, although I've not really been that active on them recently. I am Eva Christie Hand Knitting on Facebook and Tumblr. I'm at Eva Knits on Twitter and you'll find me as Pan Within on Ravelry. We have a Ravelry group for this podcast that you can go and check out if you're enjoying it. it you'll find us under the group tab for Eva Christie Hand Knitting Podcast Group. Just want to say a massive thank you to, to all of you. You're all just absolutely fantastic. You know, if you've been watching me for a, a while or a few episodes or whatever, welcome back. Thank you so much. I can't believe that we've got 199 subscribers. It's just, it's blowing my mind. If you do like us and this is your first time, well, welcome. You know, even if you don't particularly like it, welcome. Thanks for giving me a, a shot. There are a shed load of knitting podcasts out there these days. I had no idea just how many there were up until recently and I compiled um, a list that's it's near enough as complete as far as I'm aware um, in my Ravelry group for other places that you might want to check out. I really do just appreciate you taking a little bit of time out and, and watching me so if you do like this please hit subscribe and go and join the, the group as well because that way you will be eligible for any sort of prizes or yarn aways and knit alongs and things that I, I host or co-host. I'm going to keep this quite brief at the minute um, today because it is organised chaos. Um, the eagle eyed of you will realise that I am a daily in recording or possibly be even a further day later in uploading. As for next week, goodness knows. Um, we've got a house move in progress here at the minute and seriously I'm so going to have to call this episode Dude Where's My Stash because the full stash bar, just maybe four balls of yarn are, are completely packaged up. Um, my home really isn't my home anymore. Um, I'm just itching to get into our new forever home um, with Josh and the girls and then start getting it sorted. I mean we've had carpets measured, we've got a deposit down the new suite. It's just, yeah, even though we're only changing houses with our neighbour next door, there are still so many just little itty bitty bits we're going to do. Um, while all this has been going on, we've had a totally unseasonal heat wave. Um, we've had thunderstorms and lightning storms. I've never seen anything like these in, in all my days. It's been crazy. So I've been trying to sort of run back and forth between houses during all that weather and it's yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun, but it needs to be done. I mean, it's, I'm not complaining. Um, I'm just, I feel so blessed that I'm getting the chance to live in this new house. It is going to be, you know, the, the home that Josh and I are going to raise our, our family in. It's just going to be absolutely amazing. But I'm at that stage where I just kind of want all my stuff in, everything packaged, and then just kind of take my time to, to organise it. So whenever I do next podcast, it will be from my new abode. Um, although it won't probably be from the, the area that I'm going to use as my studio space um, but it'll be a total guddle in the background I would have thought. Um, the hat's on today, this is a, a hat I knitted out, some new, new Lanark um, pure wool um, iron weight which is kind of like a worsted weight. Many many moons ago um, I, I've got serious, serious hat hair going on at the minute. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, moving swiftly on. So if you haven't been here before, this is a, a podcast about knitting novels and other cultural pursuits and stuff that I'm, I'm up to. And up until maybe about half an hour ago, I didn't have any rehomed yarns to show you this week. But I do, because the postman bought, he, he bought one, one ball one skein. I've got one other on its way from Germany and after that this is a proper yarn dye up until um, the Perth Festival of Yarn happens on the 2nd of October. I've been really doing really well recently at knitting my stash down but I'm going to have to make more of a concerted effort so that I can justify spending at Perth Festival of Yarn. 
So first up I'll show you this. So this is a ball of Opal, this is from Cher Pate Fünf, the pattern shop. It looks a lot darker, I had to get this online and it, it did look a lot darker on the screen. But this is fine. I'm just looking for sock yarns at the minute because I'm doing reasonably well again on my whole box of socks and sock knitting progress. I am now looking to knit some socks as birthday and Christmas gifts as this year sort of wears on. So these these have got things sort of in mind. This one is called Vulchen and it's colour 7254. We've got 100 grams here for 125 metres and it's, yeah, it's more sort of um autumnal sort of rustic type shades. There's a bit of blue, but I, I thought the blue was going to be kind of like a navy blue and I didn't realise there was any sort of dark browns in this when I bought it, but we'll, we'll see how it knits up because you always, on opal yarns, get a little, little picture in the back as to how they, they believe it's going to stripe up. If you're going to knit socks out of it, that is. So we'll just we'll see. It could be interesting. And then the second one I've got that just came out of the package completely unskeined, so I'll have to skein it back up. I thought it shows the colour off quite well now. This is Knit Global, which I used to be able to get Macari Brothers in sterling, but they don't appear to have it anymore. Look at that. I think this might be a pair of socks for my mother-in-law. She's got her birthday now. A few months' time. Um, although it's quite pastel, it's maybe a bit pinky for what she she normally wears. She tends to go for the same sort of colours that I do, um, so it may be maybe for someone else. So we'll see. So this is Knit Global. It's four ply. Um, we've got 75% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. I should have said that the opal sock yarns, but the same. 400 meters to 100 grams. It's called Rose Garden. So that's, that's quite nice. It's a bit different to the sort of the colours that are normally in it, so I'm looking forward to that. But obviously, I'll have to get it on the ball winder and get it properly balled up first. Just going to take a little sip of coffee here for a minute. I'm completely living on coffee at the moment. Coffee and takeaway pizza is ridiculous. There's a fair amount of fruit and raw veg going on there as well, though, but oh. It's not forever means to an end here. I haven't got a huge amount of knitting done this week. I think I went four complete days with no knitting done at all. I was about ready to climb the walls. I can't remember the last time I had a break like that. It was just completely unreal. So I don't have a huge amount to show you this week but I did want to kind of at least keep to, to my weekly format even if I'm maybe just a day or two to do it off there. So I have a finished item some people might say it's a half finished item but here we go so pair five sock one i love this i absolutely love this so this is the arn and carlos um sock yarn with regia for their design line i think this is the summer moon colorway that they called it's just got a number on the label this was the yarn that I've been coveting for years and finally, finally managed to get hold of. Completely in love. It's so cosy and warm. It's a 75-25 mix. It's just... Oh. So extremely, extremely happy with how it's coming on. This is my own sort of sock recipe. Now I've just kind of devised what's kind of good for me with my Celtic calves. So I've done like a, just a 2 by 2 rib on this one. Just doing plain vanilla sock for a change. Straight down. Kitchen out the toe. I did do a, a reinforced heel. But you can't even really tell with the way that the, the yarn patterns. You can't really tell that that's reinforced. Um, short row heels, slip stitch. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, and it fits. Absolutely delighted it fits. I've only, the only thing that I've got on my needles then, sort of merging two sections into one, is I do have the second sock cast on. I've only done two rounds so I'm not going to show you, but that's the only thing that I've got on my needles at the minute because everything is just completely packed away. And I thought, you know, socks were a small project that I could just kind of keep about 
in one of the small project bags that my mum made me and just kind of keep it keep it to my side keep it in my bag for when I'm traveling but you know I, I'd only just really started I'd done the cuff and I'd done maybe six rounds or so um, when I showed that to you last week and I really haven't done a huge amount since then it's just you know self-imposed Josh telling me I had to get some R&R &R in um, at the weekend there and traveling when I've had to travel back and forth to sort of things out with buying so I get deposits down and things that's when the rest of it's been done. I've only got two squares in my blanket I am missing my cozy memories blanket and just being able to crack on and get all the different sections in in this and I desperately wanted to try and get three three squares done in this but it just wasn't to be because as you can tell that would have been the third section squared off at that point so we'd had three complete sections of 16 squares and the fourth section is about half done so I have added two squares to this this week you'll probably recognize this one here we go so this square is the Osterman step in color 0245 and this kind of tomato -y red colours here which I just love, so warm. This is Aracania, I believe it's Rancho and I'm not sure whether it's got a number or a colour name to be honest. Um, this is from a, a frogged project from a couple of years ago. I got the yarn from uh, the now now closed Elena Costella Yarn and Fibre Studio. I bought enough to do a little short sleeved um, fitted vintage rib top and just fell out of love with it while I was knitting it. So it got frogged back, all the labels are now missing um, so it's just to be used for kind of like small projects because I didn't like sort of splitting the skeins because it is hand dyed and, and such as as well and it's all kind of balled up ready to go so, yeah and separated up some. So two squares on this. I forgot to do a little bit of Cal news there so I hope you will forgive me. Um, Glasgow Subway Cal Knit Along and Crochet Along is still ongoing. I'm not doing the board this week, that is also packed, but I can see that there's quite a lot of good chatter going on, some fantastic projects being shared within the group. Keep it up folks, you're doing really, really well. I think we've got somebody new that's just joined in as well, so that's fabulous. I haven't even bothered trying to calculate um, how much extra I've done. I know I've got 80 metres from adding in my two squares in my Cozy Memory Silk Yarn Blanket. I'll have just, probably just under 200 metres from that sock. I think, I think I'm around about 315, 315 metres from a pair of socks last time but I've not added my sock in yet so I'm not going to give you the running total this week. The other thing that I want to briefly touch on here is our Durbaville along which also has some, yeah there's a couple of threads up within our Ravelry group as well. So this is the, our most recent cal, it's going to begin on the 1st of August. We are knitting a Sontag and reading Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy at the same time. Beginning on the 1st of August it will run for six weeks. There will be a prize for one lucky person who completes both the novel, finishes the novel and finishes their Sontag. You are allowed to read any forward before the 1st of August or, or any sort of notes or anything like that but you're not allowed to start the novel proper. As for the knitting you can use any pattern for a Sontag you wish. Um, Sydney from the Literature Podcast I believe is taking part in this so we've got a couple of podcasters taking part. Sydney has asked you know is it a strict Sontag? Well that's kind of what I prefer but basically any shawl that is going to be able to comfortably cross across your, your breasts or your chest and tie round the back. I, I would rather people take part and have fun you know and, and knit alongside us and read the novel rather than be incredibly strict about the construction of the garment. 
there are free patterns on Ravelry, there's some paid for patterns in Ravelry, so I'm not being exactly strict about which pattern you must go for. I haven't even decided yet on which pattern I'm using or the yarn, and seeing as the 1st of August is my official move date, I won't be recording on that day. Oh, I don't think I will be anyway, and I certainly won't be starting the shawl at that point, but I'll probably I've got the novel sitting out um, ready to go on my bedside table, so you know I will start at least reading the novel at, at that point. Um, but there's there's two separate. Sorry, I'm a bit all over the place today. There are two separate threads in Ravelry, as I've said. One is a suggested reading schedule, um, just to keep you on track for the six weeks. You don't have to adhere to that; it is just a guide. And the other one, we've got a bit of chatter going on for our, our Durbaville. Uh, Durbaville Long and there's a lovely um, screenshot from the most recent adaptation which I believe is a BBC adaptation which starred Gemma Arterton as Tess, it's got Eddie Redmayne as oh, Angel Clare and I can't remember who played Alec but Alex in the picture as well. Okay so that brings me swiftly on to what I'm reading. So I have finished Everything and Nothing by Araminta Hall. This was fabulous. It was a little predictable um, into what Super Nanny Aggie was going to get up to, to be fair. It is a good read. It'd be a good holiday read. Um, easily pick up, put down. I just kind of wanted to play on with it. It was, it was so simple just to kind of get through. Um, I actually found myself sympathising quite a lot with the nanny, um, which did make me feel a little uncomfortable, but do you know, that is a sign of a great author when it can make you actually feel any sort of emotion towards any of the characters at all. So yeah, this is, this is a recommended thumbs up, folks. And then I've just had just over a week of, what do I read? I can not read anything. I always have to read a little bit of a novel a day, even if it's just a couple of pages. And I can't start Tess yet, so what do I do? And I thought, well, do I read some poetry? Do I read some short stories? No, because everything's completely packed up. All the books are packed up. Seriously, this is probably what's stressing me out. All my novels are gone. My stash is gone. I just feel so completely ungrounded. But what I had looked out, and I think this will be good for just kind of dipping dipping into anyway because it is a mammoth novel shall we call it. So I can I've started reading this, I'll read a wee bit up until we start Tess and then I made it between the two although I do tend to be a monogamous reader and that's how I prefer it and completely immerse myself in one novel at a time. But yeah but this will keep me going anyway. So here we go, We've got Victor Hugo, Les Miserables. It's massive. 1,232 pages in here. I believe that he did try, he wrote it over a 20 year period and it was to rival Tolstoy's War and Peace. I have never watched any of the musical adaptations. I have never watched the films, any of the televisual series or anything like this for Les Mis. Um, I have played, when I've been in bands, a selection of songs from it and of some pieces from it as well so I, I know that from the musicals but beyond that I've never read the book. So I started this a couple of days ago I'm 33 pages through <laughs> and 33 pages through this novel puts me at 2.6%. This is going to keep me entertained for a while. So this is what I'm going to read up until test begins. It'll be fine. I managed Moby Dick recently. I'm not. I've got to say, the size of books don't usually put me off the content. But when I see them that big, yeah, I do kind of have certain thoughts. But I've started and quite enjoying the kind of the the poetic um, style. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Where else are we? Okay, what I've been watching, watching very little. There has been a lot of Star Trek Next Generation on in the background. Here we go. 
confession time. Not a sci-fi fan at all. Um, it's all on Netflix, Josh is watching it, it's in the background. I'm switching off. I'm just too exhausted even really to be keeping up to date with my podcasts. Um, so although it's been in the background, I've not been paying any attention to it whatsoever. Apart from making the odd sort of, you know, make it so number one do this sort of kind of comments just to kind of jolly Josh along because it is moving home is a stressful time. Um, but I have watched episode four of six of the living and the dead and we've got episode five on tonight and things are obviously taking a bit of a turn and I'm in all honesty I'm really not sure what to think because I've just been loving this and so drawn in from the moment it it began and then towards the end of the last episode there was like a a flickering on Nathan's desk and it kind of looks like a screen of some sort you know like it's a, a phone or a tablet or a, a television it's got that kind of like white noisy staticky things that are going on what is that I, I need to have a Ouija board kind of sitting nearby earlier in the episode there's like oh what's going on and then he's sitting at the end and it just kind of finishes off and it's like lights come through a window and kind of looking at it going. Okay, they're still driving horses and carts and things in this time. Those look like the headlights in a car. What is going on? And right enough, this bright yellow car just pulls up outside and all of a sudden we're in modern day times and Colin Morgan who's been playing Nathan suddenly is wearing modern day clothes looking extremely sexy actually in a pea coat do like a man in a pea coat so yeah well we'll see we'll see what's happening so this is obviously something that's supposed to be sort of like bringing different stages of, of time together and I'm like I say I'm not sure how I feel about that at the moment I've been listening to the audiobook of Epi Beast by Theodore Fontaine this is the third week I've kind of been listening to it and now I have completed all nine hours. I found an audiobook was a really good thing to kind of have on in the background while I was packing stuff away. The other thing that I've really been listening to is just a lot of Morrissey. An awful, awful lot of Morrissey, which you might normally see as being kind of quite miserable music. I, I don't kind of view it as that at all. I can find some Morrissey and Smith actually quite motivating, to be honest. Um, a Northern Soul, been listening to an awful, awful lot of Northern Soul as well. So that's that's keep me going. I will confess to having the odd boogie in the living room, in the living room while I've been sort of packing boxes and, and shifting stuff, anything to try and keep my spirits up. We're almost there, folks. Really, quite a short episode this week. I hope it doesn't feel like I've been rushing, rushing through it too much. But before I want to go, I just want to give a little bit of pod love out to a very special someone. And it's someone that I've meant to give pod love before and I, I don't know, you know, I, I try and keep notes as I'm listening to, to things and doing things to try and collate together just before I do my podcast. And I hope... Um, she doesn't take offence. I've not mentioned her before because she is an absolute little sweetheart of a of a woman. It's not been intentional at all. So this this is for you, Katie Ann. Miss Katie Ann um, has six episodes out of the Least Knits podcast, and as you might imagine from that title, her lace work is just stunning that's kind of one of her preferred sort of things to do she's based down in Nottingham she's been giving a lot of pod love out particularly to the the Scottish um knitting podcast community very very gentle um I like her approach we've got nothing too polished going on that I've, I've seen I prefer really quite organic podcasts it does have to be said Katie Katie Ann, you have been on my list for a while. I am so, so sorry I've not given you any pod love before now, but the flip side of that is with my 199 wonderful, beautiful subscribers and hopefully many more to, to come to kind of join in the party. We'll probably have a lot more people there to, to kind of 
you know, go and go and check you out. So please go give some Katie some love, um, as well as, you know, all my other all my other favourites, all my other absolute darlings. So that brings us to the end, folks. End of episode sixteen. I just want to wish you wish you love and wish you happiness. So happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy spinning, happy sewing, happy whatever it is you do. I should be wishing myself happy packing boxes at the minute because that seems to be really what I'm doing at the moment. Um, I'm, I just feel, feel so honoured that you continue spending time with me. I really didn't want to miss just kind of tuning in and catching up with you again this week. Sorry, it's probably not been as interesting as usual. There's usually a lot more going on, a lot more colours, a lot more discussion. I know that you'll appreciate that. You've all just been so beautiful and pure of spirit in reaching out to me since my last podcast where I actually kind of elaborated a bit um, on my personal life and my health and that's been very much appreciated. I've been very touched by the reactions of the people who have felt moved enough to, to get in touch. I do have some more private messages that I need to get back in touch with. Please please know that I will get back in touch with you. It's just as I've said, it is organised chaos here. I do have to pace myself in order to get everything done that I want to get done in any sort of given day. Um, and the priority at the minute, it's, it's not that you're not a priority because of course you are. The priority really here has to be my, my fur family and my partner and my neighbour and, and getting everything sorted for, for our homes so that we do properly have a roof over our head and food in our bellies and things like carpet and things to sit on because <laughs> it's not going to be much fun if we don't have that. So thank you guys. Um, I will catch up with, with all you podcasters that follow me that I'm subscribed to as well. I will be catching up with you all really really soon. I am a wee bit behind this week. I'm normally totally up to date on the subscription in a week and then I go back and look at back episodes but it's just not happening just now. Love, love you all hugs to you all. Take care of one another and be gentle with yourself and I'll see you in a week. Bye.